Okay, this shut off, so I'm going to have to put this these two together. I hate it when it does that, and I have to download them and edit it together and all that, because when I do it, I'm filming on my camera, and anytime I film on my camera, I have to download it on the computer, but I prefer filming on my camera. I just think it films better, and it's... The program that I have on my cam, my computer, my laptop, doesn't work as well to splice them together as the phone does. So I was reading this book, starting the book, and it says, For my mom, Lori, the unsinkable optimist. And the chap first chapter is, maybe she's born with it. Just look at these chapters. The second one is Anything Can Happen. The third one is Yes and. The fourth is If It Isn't There, Create It. I mean, really, really. One of them's called The Struggle Is Worth It. Activate Your Purpose. Finding Your White Space. You're Tall Enough. Throw a Fell Mary. She made it work. I mean, those sound like really, we will hope, but they sound like really, really good. Let's see, maybe I should re read the introduction. Should I read the introduction? I guess I will read the introduction so you all know a little bit more, which will probably not give me time to finish the first chapter. Let's see. But... See, hi, I'm Jess. I'm a rowdy sports fan disguised as a polite southern girl. I'm obsessed with my dog, and my husband is pretty great, too. I'm an entrepreneur with, bus with no business plan. I laugh at my own jokes. I can't touch my toes. I don't own an iron. I think I'm the only person who can't keep a succulent alive and I'm always on the hunt for my next burrito bowl. But before we dive in, I think it's important you know some of my core beliefs. French fries don't have calories if they're on someone else's plate. Thrift shopping counts as exercise. If you bring your umbrella, it won't rain. Coffee goes towards your daily water intake. Menu, menus with pictures help me make more informed ordering decisions. My dog completely understands when I speak to him in full sentences. Yellow traffic lights mean you floor it. Airports are rated by their food courts and seat to outlet racial. Picking up your takeout order on a Friday night still qualifies as going out. Now that we've been acquainted, I want you to know I'm glad you're here. Whether you're curled up in your favorite chair with a cup of coffee, or you're standing in a bookstore holding three different titles and wondering if this book is worthy of your precious time, Here's a quick peek at what this journey will be like. This book will have lots of stories, good, great, funny, bad, and really bad, of how I've created a company that's helped hundreds of thousands of kids with cancer. Wow, I didn't know that. I've been able to share this mission on shows like The Today Show, Good Morning America, and The View. Celebrities like Lauren Conrad, Kelsey Ballerina, Khloe Kardashian, and Leah Michelle have marched behind it, and we've now donated hundreds of thousands of headbands to children with cancer in dozens of different countries. But inside all these stories is one consistent thread, and it's the thread that you'll learn to practice as you read this book, Optimism. Why optimism? Because anyone who has ever done something great had to believe in something better than the present. As you read, you'll see that optimism isn't about getting from A to B, 
Optimism is this rooted belief that there's something good on the other side. It's about the voice in our heads that gives us the green light to chase our dreams. It's about understanding that we can't control all our experiences, but we can control what they mean to us and the story they write for us. I'll give you the tools to help you do that. The stories we write from our experiences help us decide if we're going to start the business or not, if we're going to attempt the pull-up or not, if we're going to pick up the trash on the street or not, if we're going to ask for the promotion or not, if we're going to book that trip or not, if we're going to live fulfilled or not. The stories we write in our heads tell us how we're going to respond. Are we good enough, tall enough, up for the challenge? Is it the right time? But sometimes the voices in our heads tell us it's not our turn. Or they make us believe we're not ready. If we listen to those moments, in those moments, it's easy to get knocked off track. So what happens when we choose to change the story? Opportunity. That's what happens when we move beyond those negative voices and change the narrative to focus on the possibility that there's good out there and we can bring it into our reality. It opens up a whole other world that we might have thought was beyond reach. Everything we want is within our grasp if we're really willing to throw perfection out the door and embrace the messiness of the journey. It isn't crazy to think that the entire life we want is waiting for us on the other side of our thoughts. One flicker of change inside our heads can catapult us onto the stage we were born to stand on. Now, just to clarify, this book is not a positively positivity pledge. I'm not going to tell you to put on a happy face and skip down the street high-fiving everyone who walks by. Although, if you want to do that, I'm not stopping you. I'm not going to tell you to just add sprinkles and everything will be okay. And I'm certainly not going to tell you, don't worry, be happy. Because I think someone already said that. Optimism is that place where we can see and understand that bad, but understand the bad, but still believe there can be good. And most important, optimism fuels the belief that we can be the ones to create the good the world needs. If you peel back the layers of anyone's success, Optimism is the first seed that has to be planted for any great movement, change, startup, or revolution to begin. A lot of the time, we think this seed is a skill set or expertise, so we don't go for it. As if anyone who joins a circus was born knowing how to swing from the trapeze or jump through fire. None of us was born knowing how to fly a plane, do our taxes, poach an egg, or start a company. We all had to start somewhere, and that somewhere is optimism. So let's debunk this myth that to be successful, you have to have it figured all figured out, because that's impossible. In order for us to have a ch chance at making a dent in the universe, we have to be optimistic enough to see something better and confident enough to just begin. We grow and learn on the way to our goals, not to the static planning. I started Headbands of Hope when I was 19 years old. It was a college dorm room startup and as scrappy as they come, for every headband sold, a headband is donated to a child with cancer. Making that happen has been some of the most rewarding, impactful work I could have imagined. It all started with a summer internship 
at the Make-A-Wish Foundation with the belief that there has to be good in the middle of the hard stuff and maybe I can be the one to create it. Well, that's the Cookie Cutter Podcast interview linked in bio. Let's meet for coffee and brag about ourselves. Answer that I always give, but it's only a small part of the story. I wasn't skipping around in a flower crown when an idea popped into my head. Optimism came from feeling like I was being dragged down a river, then found a branch I could grab to help me stay afloat. I white-knuckled on to meaning and purpose when I felt like I was out of control and being pulled under water. Maybe we can see the good more clearly when we need it most. Sometimes optimism can be hard because we have to progressively think about things that haven't yet even yet happened. We have to let ourselves dream of a better next. But the threat of not being optimistic is stagnancy. We can't move forward to a better tomorrow if we don't believe and visualize what could be. Then we must be confident enough to actively march toward that vision. This book will share moments of my life when I didn't just magically find the bright side, I had to chase it. Whether that was with my business, my family, or even becoming a water aerobics instructor. Yes, I'm serious. When I didn't just magically find the bright side, I had to chase it. Optimism is the combination of how you think, how you react, and how you connect your life to something greater. Living optimistically will set you up for a wild and meaningful life. But if you're one of those people who needs science and data to believe something is important, then pretend Bill Nye the Science Guy is narrating this part. The Mayo Clinic reports a number of health benefits associated with optimism including a reduced, li- reduced risk of death from cardiovascular problems, less depression, and increased lifespan. Harvard Men's Health Watch says optimism helps people cope with disease and recovering from surgery. Even more impressive is the impact of a positive outlook on overall health and longevity. Research tells us that an optimistic outlook early in life can predict better health and a lower rate of death during follow-up periods of 15 to 40 years. The National Center for Biotechnology Information says optimists are significantly, significantly more successful than pessimists in aversion events and when important life goals are impaired. Are you convinced now? This book will not force you to be happier or make you feel like you're not doing enough. I'm tired of lists that guarantee happiness if I just drink more water and meditate at red lights. I am not going to judge you or make you feel guilty. What I want is to motivate and inspire you to chase the one life you have been given. I'm here to help you train a muscle in your head to see the good, even when it's hard, and give you the extra push to create your own beautiful reality. This book will show you that you can understand and absorb negativity without being consumed by it. It's time to forge your own way and to create the life you want to live. Optimism opens the door to the pastures of possibility that are there for all of us if we just look for them. Trust me, it's there for you. So let's stop with the Sunday scaries and say, yes. There's my thing. Let me finish reading this, though. It's almost done. So let's stop with the Sunday scaries and say, yes to life's offer to live loud vibrantly and purposefully. Life is short and so is my attention span. Fill up my coffee cup and let's get started. 
So it took that long to read, but then that was several, what's that? One, two, what three, four, five, five pages. So then next week, unless you all want me to read some more before then, I will start on Maybe She's Born With It. It does look like a really interesting book. Tell me what you all think about just from the... Yeah, I think I can read one. I was looking at how many pages. So I think I can read one chapter during the 15 minute for mask. So tell me, all, tell me what you all think about the story, what it's going to be. I really do think it is going to be a really good story. Yep, 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 yep. I like it so far. And so let me know, what do you all think about the story? Are you excited to hear more of it? Guys, I want to show you something that I made a racing team. Here in a second. I'm going to have this posted tomorrow, so let me know what if did you do anything fun over the weekend? Yeah. Oh, our our local Walmart. I read this morning there was over 30 cases of COVID from the Walmart employees, and obviously they weren't making them quit work. I read some people were complaining that some of the workers were still being going to work even though they were sick until they tested positive and the district manager went in last week and completely shut the store down sent everybody home and I think it opened back up today and it was shut down for three or four days while they had someone come in and completely sterilize the whole store. And I'm thinking, I live in a pretty small town, and that kind of scares me because I'm thinking if there was that many employees with it, how many other people have it? And was it just the employees, or, you know, are we going to start finding out that people who shop there have it? And I'm thinking, our small town, is it going to get high numbers? Is it, um, it makes me, I mean, I've been pretty much on lockdown. Y'all know I've been homeschooling Levi, so I'm thinking maybe I want to go on back on more of a stricter lockdown for a couple of weeks until I see, hold on, until I see if the numbers get higher or if it was just the employees what do y'all think i'm thinking since i already have lung problems and levi has a compromised immune system i have been really really picky i'm glad i actually stopped doing curbside pickup because i was doing curbside pickup from walmart when it first started for months and i just recently started doing going to the store because the numbers look like they were going down and now I'm worried I wonder if they're going to start going back up so I washed that off I don't really feel anything yet it actually does I guess because I did the exfoliating first it does feel a little it did feel a little tender right around my mouth but I don't know. I've also had a... I'm not sick, but my allergies have been bothering me, so I've also been blowing my nose a lot. So that might be part of why my mouth in this area here is a bit sensitive. But, I mean, of course you're not going to be able to tell any difference right now. But what do you all think of the story? What do you think of... What you've seen of the mask, what you've seen of my trophy skin, and mm -hmm. Levi, 
and I love you guys. He wants to show you something real quick. And please remember, oh, you can show right here. He has been out playing, so he is a bit he, dirty. We live in the country, so when he goes out to play, he, so really gets, he really gets filthy. So, so I made this tractor with duels on the back. Cause I know a lot about farming and stuff. You can take them off and only have one side of duels because they oh uh oh well exploded. Anyways, we got this trailer since we can't haul all the tracks. You can hook this trailer up and then hook this other trailer up with a winch. If y'all watched my if you watched Mass Monday last week, you know he was my special guest so i guess he didn't want mass monday to go by without him saying hi <laughs> okay finish showing your part so we can get Wait, this is a winch piece you hook up the winch from my trailer right here you have tools a toolbox right there built in yeah he built all of this from his imagination yeah and you can take the duels off like that those stick out a little bit so you can put half of one tire and half another so it stay on, and then you can put it like that so it's not duels anymore. You got like a drag racer then thing, and you got this in case you are in case you are wondering. It actually winches up if it don't break on you. Sometimes it breaks, but you can do. If it don't break, sometimes it just don't want to connect on there. Uh, wait. I didn't Trails. show you. All. Did you? Can you see my new design I did on my nails? All homemade too. Aren't they cool? You can. This one I put some. Uh, tried to put the little. I don't know if you can see it. The little gems on the bottom. I actually broke this nail this right here and I didn't want to cut it because all my nails are pretty long and I mended it and it has held I'll have to show you one day I mended that and it has been four or five days and it is still perfect and it was broke down here about halfway across and so far the break is not there yeah anyways you got this and it pulls it back. It keeps breaking off because you have to hold it a special way. 